Uh, is, yeah, you think that's like, true? Well, I would start with China. All right. Because China has absolute power. The stuff comes through China. I'd also, I, I, I would have done Iran, but I don't think you're going to get anywhere with Iran now because they're a hostile nation. They took our money. They spent the money. They bought 118 Airbus planes instead of Boeing's. Mm -hmm. Okay, in other words, the money goes to Europe. They bought a lot of things in Italy. They bought a lot of things all over Europe. And they bought missiles, which I didn't know they had the right to buy. Mm. They bought a lot of missiles from Russia. They gave us nothing. We gave them 150 billion. Out of the 150 billion, they've spent a lot of it. Nothing goes to the United States. Uh, I would have been very strong in the negotiation that Iran has to push them. And I would have been, I would now be very strong on China. Because again, we have a lot of power over China. Because China takes out so much money. So we're gonna lose, again, I said before, $500 billion trade deficit with China. You can't do that, Pat. How long are you going to have a country if you do that? So, I hate to tell you folks, you need somebody like me. I'm good at this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know... <laughs> do, do you know, Pat, that the politicians don't even know about it. They don't even know, they don't even know what it means. They, they really don't. They talk about free trade. I'm a free trader. Mm -hmm. But you got to have smart trade, too. You don't have to be intelligent. Yeah, yeah. And I say there'll be a tax. Like Kerry, I was just saying, Kerry's moving over to Mexico. They're going to make air conditions. They're going to sell them to us. No tax, no nothing. Mm -hmm. So we lose 1,400 jobs. They move to Mexico. They build a plant. They employ Mexican people, which is fine. They make air conditions. They sell them. I would tell them, here's the story, folks. Here's the story. And this is the only thing you can do to stop it. I mean, in all fairness. Mm -hmm. Here's the story. You're going to make air conditions. We wish you a lot of luck. I hope you build a nice plant. Enjoy yourselves. But every time you put an air conditioner into this country, you send an air conditioner, you're going to have a 35% tax. They're not going to move. They're not moving. Because you have to do it. That's called... Now, now, Pat, there are people who would say, oh, you're not a conservative. Well, I'm the most conservative guy in many ways, but you have to be smart. Otherwise, everyone's going to move. We're not going to have anybody left. You know, you know the kind of thousands and thousands of factories have closed in our country. Mm -hmm. And Pat said it before, corporate inversion. You have people that can't get money back in that they have. Yeah. And they're actually moving companies, not only for, because the taxes are too high, but they're moving companies out of the United States, like Pfizer. Not true. Pfizer's a great company. They're moving out thousands of jobs. Once. They're moving to get money because there's $2.5 trillion outside of the United States. They can't get it in. And yet the Democrats and the Republicans agree, bring it in. So all you have to do if you're Obama is sit down with both. Within 10 minutes, you'd make a deal. There's a case where everyone agrees and they Why can't make a deal. Why hasn't he done it? I could tell you the story, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I like that example because, so there's two and a half trillion. I think it could be five trillion. Could mm -hmm. be more than that. But, you know, the government says two and a half, but they don't know. They have no idea. If they say two and a half, it's probably much more. But here's a case where Democrats and Republicans are in total agreement. You know, it's one thing they disagree on health care, they disagree on all these other things, and we get it, all right? Mm -hmm. It's tough. But here's something they, they all agree on. We want the money back in our country. You know, what's not to agree on, right? So you can work on a little tax, a little this, a little that, but it should be... It should be 10 minutes to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. So they agree here, they agree here, the money's going to come back in. No deal. They've agreed now for three years. And what that is, is leadership. If I were president, I would get them all in an office, big office, and I would say, fellas, we've got to make this deal. Folks, because we have a lot of women now, and that's good. We have to make this deal. We have to make this deal. And let's get it done. I think you'd have it done in a half hour. Mm -hmm. But you need leadership. Yeah. You know, you can't fly to Hawaii to play golf on a Boeing 747. Uh, uh, talking about the, talking about the carbon footprint. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, Pat, he talks about the carbon footprint, right? Mm -hmm. And then he gets on a 747 to play golf and he spews the stuff and comes back a long time later. It wasn't yeah. like he came back the next day. He comes yes. back, played a lot of, he plays a lot of golf. Okay. So anyway, but, but you got to get people into an office and you got to make deals. One last question. I know David's got some okay. questions from the audience, but uh, uh, Scalia just died. He was a dear friend here at Regent, a dear friend of all of us, and uh, a great justice. The court was in a conservative mode, uh, five to four, on a lot of votes anyhow. And uh, now uh, we've got a, the next president may have Ginsburg, there may be three judges. Right. Uh, three, uh, what three, what could criteria be would you use to uh, Well, we have judges. some good ones. We have Judge Alito, who's terrific, Sam. Yeah, uh, terrific. Uh, we have uh, Judge Thomas, who I think is a terrific judge. That's who's correct. been real strong uh, 
was a very, very good guy. And uh, we have some that didn't work out as well. I mean, if you look at uh, Justice Roberts, he could have killed Obamacare twice. Mm -hmm. No matter what he does, it's like, you know, he was appointed by Bush. By the way, I will tell you that uh, Senator Cruz is the one that pushed him. He was the one that most wanted him. In fact, mm -hmm. he wrote editorial suit, but you've got to have Roberts, you've got to have Roberts. And Justice Roberts was a, a terrible, terrible situation because he approved Obamacare when everybody said it was going to be terminated. Mm -hmm. He was the vote that said, we're going to keep it. So it was then he had a second time at it, which would have also killed it, and he passed it then, too. And some of the other judges are the conservative. I mean, the rumors are that some of them wouldn't even speak to him. Mm -hmm. But what he did was terrible. Now, he was a Bush appointee, and he was really proposed. He, the one that pushed him harder than anybody was Cruz, Senator Cruz. And so Senator Cruz gave us Obamacare in a true sense, because any good can... True. It's true. Oh. In fact, the, you, have, you have right now, they have editorials where he wrote, he wrote actually papers on why he should be the one chosen, signed by Ted Cruz. So, I mean, he has been, no matter what he does, he's been a disastrous judge, because Obamacare is killing everybody. It's killing everybody. So, one more question. In your selection as president, what criteria would you use to yeah. pick somebody? Pro-life. Pro-life. Uh, we want, we want. <laughs> Starts with that. Starts with a, a Very conservative, very, very smart. I mean, like Judge Scalia would be a perfect, you know, that's, he mm. was like a perfect, he was a perfect uh, representative. I, I've always said that uh, Justice Thomas doesn't get enough credit. Uh, he's a wonderful man. He is. He's a wonderful man. He's a wonderful guy. Yeah. And I've always said, and as I said, uh, Judge Alito is, is a terrific guy. So um, in that realm is what we're talking about okay. for me. Well, we've got some questions. Uh, all right. They've come in from all okay. around. Good. And uh, I'll Good. turn this over to our friend David. Thank you, sir. Hello, Mr. Trump. Thank you, David. Good to see you. Thank you. Uh, here's a question from the simulcast room because this event is huge, you know, and, you know, we've got an overflow oh, room, by I the way. That. I thought you'd like to know that. I um, see a lot of people up there. That's beautiful. That's right. <laughs> They're everywhere. All right, here's the question. It's about Israel. It's from Kerry from the right. simulcast room. Support of Israel, essential for continuing stability in the Middle East, obviously, and for maintaining a firm stance against terrorism. Will you emphatically stand with Israel yes. is the question. Very simple answer. Yes. <laughs> they've, they've been our most reliable ally, especially in the Middle East. And you look at, you know, what's happened with Israel. They were so against this horrible Iran deal. They were so against it. And I tell you what, Obama was the worst thing that's ever happened to Israel. Mm -hmm. You can look at it as he's not a good president and he's not doing a good job. And you look at uh, Bibi Netanyahu, you look at what he has gone through. I mean, you could just see the level of exasperation on that man's face, how they just, mm -hmm. the most basic things, they weren't winning anything. Why did we make a deal like this with these people? And they look at us like they have no respect for us whatsoever. They can't believe themselves that they were able to get this deal. I don't get it. I mean, I don't get it. There are a lot of theories out there, but I don't get it. This will be studied and studied for a long time. And this will prove to be a very bad deal. This will lead to nuclear proliferation 100%. Sure. And all the money we gave, everything we gave, even the keeping of the hostages, and, you know, ultimately they released the hostages for $150 billion they released. So it really looks like ransom. The other way, it wouldn't have been ransom. Mm -hmm. The way I said it, and it would have been back four years earlier. No, I'm with Israel 100%. All right. Next question. Uh, this also from the simulcast room. James wants to know about the Constitution. As president, what will you do to restore adherence to the Constitution by all levels of government? Well, I'm a very strong constitutionalist. I mean, I feel so strongly about it. And we've gotten away. I mean, frankly, I think you could say it, not giving it a lot of thought, but all these executive orders, that's not a constitutional thing. And nobody ever saw this. I mean, we have... We have a president who uh, just goes and does, you know, he'll spend three minutes trying to talk somebody into it. You'll see he's got a little burden, and he just goes and signs an executive order, and he says, hey, five years later, the courts will decide. So it's not the way it's supposed to be. The good thing about executive orders is the new president can come in and immediately That's void right. them. That's, That's right. the one good thing. <laughs> one good thing. Yes. All right. 
This is an interesting one, right from here in the studio audience, from Bernard. During this campaign, there had been a great deal of tough, a lot of tough language among the candidates. Can you forgive and forget to put it aside, to join together, and also pick a VP choice made from one of these folks that might have been saying a few things? I can forgive. I mean, I'm pretty good at that. I, I do have... Every once in a while, there'll be somebody that went too far, and I won't like it. I mean, you've, you've been hearing what I've been saying over the last few weeks. And, you know, things were said that were lies, frankly. They were real lies. And I won't mention, because I can't mention Pat's presence. I wanna, <laughs> I've got I've to be a good person, you know, Absolutely. today. At least for the next hour. I'm sorry. <laughs> but there have, been many, uh, there have been many untruths told. And, uh, you know, just knowing, knowing. I mean, I think what happened to Ben Carson was terrible. When they said, he left the race, he left the race. Here, come on over, vote for me. That affected me, too, because I think I would have won Iowa. You want to know the truth. Yeah. But we're doing okay. We've got a second and three firsts, so I'm not complaining. Yeah. Am I? Yeah. But I like four firsts better. I, I won four firsts. But, but you know what happened to Ben Carson? What happened there was horrible. Uh, the notice violation, the, uh, you know, they called it a voter yeah. violation. That's like yeah. a fraudulent document that was sent. Sure. So there have been some bad things happening out there. You know, I tell people real estate is pretty tough and real estate in Manhattan, you meet some tough people. These politicians are not such good people. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, Lexi from the audience right here. Mr. Trump, there are some who say that in the past you have supported Democrat and liberal views. How can voters be sure that you will truly hold and would actually continue to uphold Republican ideas yeah. and values. Well, you know, it's interesting. As a, one of the magazines said, Donald Trump is a world-class businessman, and it was sort of interesting. I'm all over the world, and I deal with all politicians. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I never thought I'd be doing this. I just got exasperated. I would have done it four years ago. I looked at it very seriously with Romney. I was actually mm -hmm. leading in the polls. And I decided, you know, I had a lot of jobs going. My children are younger, and now they can do a great job, and I have excellent executives. But, but it's, this is not something I really was going to do or really wanted to do. I loved what I was doing. Mm -hmm. The fact is that as a businessman, you get along with all politicians, or you have a problem. So I get along with Democrats. I get along with liberals and conservatives and Republicans. I get along with everybody because that was my thing. You know, it was very important. I got along with Bob. Where's Bob? I saw Bob in the audience. Where is he? Where is he? What, by the way, and, and a fantastic person, okay? You know that. A fan, stand up, Bob. A, he's a fan. He is a fantastic person. And, but I get along with everybody. I get along with everybody. And, and that was important. And I tell people, and people would forgive me for that. They'd say, well, you know, it's true. But as a businessman, you want to get along with Democrats, Republicans, everyone. And I think for the most part, you know, that's been used on me, and I understand it. But once I explain it, most people understand. All right. Uh, Ken, from right here in the audience, wants to know, assuming you will be the nominee of the party, what are the most important qualities you are going to look for in a vice presidential candidate? And feel free to name some names. <laughs> that was my part. That was my part. Actually, there are some names that I've gotten to respect that are, you know, that have been. We started off with 17. We're now down to five. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the people that I've dealt with, I do have a lot of respect for. And I like, look, the main quality that you want is somebody that can be a great president. If something happens to you, that's got to be, don't you think? That's got to be exactly number one. Right. Exactly uh, right. And then I would want somebody that could help me with government. So most likely that would be a political person because, uh, you know, I'm business and I'm very good at what I do and all of that. And I'm also very, very political. I've, you've seen me, you know, when you can get zoning on the west side of Manhattan to build almost 6,000 units of housing and you have to go through New York City politics, believe me, you're, that's as tough. I don't say uh, Israel-Palestine, but it's about as tough a deal. It's about as tough a deal. I view that as the single toughest deal. Anybody can make that deal. And we're going to give it a shot, okay? We're going to give it a shot. But a lot of good people have gone down trying to give that one a shot. But um, the most important thing is you have to have somebody that can be a great president. But after that, you want somebody that can help you with legislation, getting it through, et cetera, et cetera. So I would say without, and it's too early, I'm not thinking about it a lot. I'm thinking about getting the ball over the line and, you know, get this thing done. And it's a very interesting thing because some people know how to do that. Some people don't. But 
I need, I want, I do want somebody that's political because I want to get lots of great legislation that we all want passed that's just sitting there for years and years and years. We have things sitting there that would be so good, including proper health care and other things. So we're going to, we're going to probably choose somebody.